Hello everyone, welcome back to the video tutorial series of the mobile computing and wireless communication. I am your instructor Varsha Ta from IT Asset Department. Let's start our lecture series. Today we are starting a new unit that is unit number 5 Bluetooth technology. Okay, so let's start our lecture series. Now, uh, before deep diving into Bluetooth, let's have a look at this figure. What it indicates? It says that we are using the Bluetooth technology and numbers of area. Okay, numbers of area like you are using it in uh, entertainment purpose, uh, you can use it in the uh, healthcare purpose. Then you can use it in a car uh, equipment also. Then it is used for uh, in the industry also. Okay, so there are numbers of area uh, where you are using the uh, Bluetooth technology. For example, you for entertainment purpose you are using the uh, wireless headphones. So that is what uh, using the Bluetooth technology. So using the Bluetooth, your wireless headphone is connected to your phone and you are able to hear the music. Okay, you can hear the uh, Bluetooth wristband. Okay, so that is what, uh, whatever the messages you are uh, uh, receiving in phone that also you are able to see in your watch. Okay, so this all at the synchronizing uh, because of the synchronizing Bluetooth uh, device is synchronized with your phone device. So whatever the data you are receiving, whether it is a call, whether it is a uh, messages that you are going to receive in your wristband. Okay, so there are numbers of area where you are using this Bluetooth technology and here it is defined that numbers of area uh, we are using the Bluetooth technology. Okay, so let's uh, do the deep dive in this. Now here, topics to be covered in this lecture that is ISM band, Bluetooth introduction, advantages of Bluetooth and disadvantages of Bluetooth. Okay, ISM band not, uh, uh, is not compulsory but to learn the Bluetooth technology, why, uh, how, how Bluetooth technology works, on which band it works. So we should have the introduction about the ISM band. So let's start with this topic one by one. Okay, so first of all ISM band. Okay, so what is ISM band? Bluetooth technology works on this ISM band and it is free. Okay, uh, because uh, when you want to connect the, any device to uh, any other device with the Bluetooth technology, you don't require any license agreement or anything. You can just uh, connect that two device directly if both of them have the Bluetooth features. Okay. So here, ISM band that is what industrial, scientific and medical radio band. Okay. ISM that is industrial, scientific, medical radio band refers a group of the uh, radio band or a path of the radio spectrum that are internationally reserved for radio frequency. Okay, so this ISM band is reserved for a radio frequency. So some of the device, some of the technology will work on this ISM band and it is free for use. So Bluetooth technology use this ISM band to communicate with any other device. Next, ISM bands are generally open frequency band. Okay, as you, we have the open source technology, same way open frequency band, we, we can use it without any license agreement. Then next, the 2.54 uh, gigahertz ISM band is a commonly accepted band for a worldwide operation. So 2.54 is a commonly accepted standard. You can use this frequency band without any license agreement, without any registration directly. Okay, you can connect two phone, uh, two uh, phone, for example, your phone your, and your friend's phone using the Bluetooth, and you can transfer the data. Uh, do you require any license agreement? You just have to connect that two device with the Bluetooth technology and you are able to transfer the data. Now, uh, where it is used? Okay, so it is used, uh, where it is used, that means where ISM band is used. Okay, so it is used in microwave ovens, cordless phones, medical uh, dial harming machines, military radars that industrial heaters so these are all are the applications where we are using the ism band or just some of the equipment that makes the use of the ism band okay any equipment that can use the ism band okay so ism band are also called the unlicensed band we don't have to uh, 
we don't have to receive uh, any licensed bank for this type of uh, uh, Bluetooth technology. For example, if you want to uh, establish the GSM structure, you require the license frequency. But here we are not able to define, uh, we don't have to uh, generate or we don't have to uh, receive the, any license from the third party. We just can access that ISM band uh, using the uh, Bluetooth technology because we are, uh, this ISM band is free. Now, uh, let's have the Bluetooth introduction. Now, all of you are aware about on which band Bluetooth is work. So, now let's uh, learn about the Bluetooth technology. Okay, so Bluetooth. Bluetooth, while Bluetooth is what a wireless technology. All of you know that you uh, you are able to connect two devices without any wire. You just have to configure that Bluetooth. Okay, then only then you are able to communicate with that device. Okay, so Bluetooth wireless technology is a short range radio technology. That means it just provides the communication for the short range. It doesn't provide the communication for more than 500 meters, etc. Okay. So, uh, which is developed for the personal area network, that is a PAN, personal area network. You are using it for the personal area network, it is not for industrial network, it is not for a metropolitan area network, not for a WAN. You can use Bluetooth device just for your personal purpose. Okay, for example, you are wearing the wristband, that is your personal purpose. You are using the headphone, that is your personal purpose. You are using the wireless mouse, wireless keyboard. So this is what your personal purpose. So Bluetooth is it developed for the personal area network. Okay, so Bluetooth is a standard developed by a group of electron electronics manufacturers that allows any sort of electronic equipment from the computers and cell phones to keyboards and headphones to make its own connections without wires and cables or any direct actions from the user. So if you want to connect this type of device, you don't require any, uh, any wire cables, okay? Without wire cables, you can communicate with that device. Now it is an ad hoc type network operable over the small areas such as a room. Okay, so it can work in a small area and it is an ad hoc type network. Why it is ad hoc type? Because we don't require any infrastructure in this. Okay, we just have to uh, configure the Bluetooth device and we are able to communicate with that device. Got it? Now, uh, Bluetooth wireless technology makes it possible to transmit the signal over the short range communication short range distance between telephones, computers and other devices and thereby simplify the communication and synchronizations between the device. Okay, it transmits the signal on the short range communication and it's synchronizing device, it uh, synchronizes the devices also. Okay, if you are going to receive the call and if you are wear the wristband, okay, so at the same time your, uh, you have the notification in your wristband, or wristband also. Okay, is it uh, uh, done any time that uh, you are receiving the call on phone uh, and after some time you are receiving the notification in your wristband? No. Okay, so it every time synchronize the device. It is a global standard that eliminates the wires and cables. Okay, it's uh, facilitated both the data and voice. You can receive the message and also you are able to see in your wristband. Okay, if you receive the call, then also you are able to see in your wristband. So it communicate, it facilitates both data and voice communication. If you have the Bluetooth headphone, you can uh, uh, you can uh, hear the voice of uh, your friends from headphone also rather than phone. Okay, and last is what it provides the ultimate synchronicity. That means whatever the data you are receiving through the phone, that same data you are going to receive with your headphone. Same data you are going to receive with your wristband. Okay, so it's provide the ultimate synchronicity. So these are the global standards for the Bluetooth. Now uh, we can say the Bluetooth is a dynamic standard. Why dynamic standard? Because device can automatically find each other. You just start your Bluetooth in your phone and you are able to, if any other devices uh, has its Bluetooth on, you are able to find the numbers of list of that particular device in your phone. Okay, so it is what a dynamic device. Now, uh, Bluetooth is intended to uh, be a standard that 
works at a two level which are two level first it provides the agreement at the physical level that physical level it's uh, uh, required the agreement to connect with each other device so bluetooth is a radio frequency standard next is what it also provides the agreements at the next level up where the products have to agree on when the bits are sent how many will be sent at the time and how the parties is convergence can be sure that the message received is the same as the message sent okay so that means it is provide the ultimate synchronicity as we have seen in the last slide got it so this uh, these are the two levels at which the bluetooth technology works now uh, next we will see why bluetooth cups which are the concept or which are the requirement so that should be followed when this bluetooth is invented Okay, so the study group within the IEEE 802.11 discussed wireless personal area network. Now, IEEE 802.11 that is what a Wi-Fi. Okay, so this IEEE 802.11 standards discussed a personal area network under the following five criteria. So, first criteria is what market potential. Okay, so how many application device vendors customers are available for the certain technology? is everyone will accept this technology okay so that study on that also done when the bluetooth drops okay now next is what compatibility so is this bluetooth device will compatible with uh, all ieee 802 standards all the 802 means like all the uh, wireless or uh, wireless standards okay so compatibility uh, should be there now uh, next uh, is for distinct identity a originally the study group did not want to establish the second standard that is 802.11 standard okay so however topics such as low low cost low power or small form factor using the wifi you can communicate uh, with much more distance rather than the bluetooth technology so we cannot define both at the same time so bluetooth has its distinct identity okay So 802.15 that is a Bluetooth standard. Okay, so that is a distinct identity for the Bluetooth. And next is what technical feasibility. So prototypes are necessary for the further discussion. So the study group could not rely on the paper work. They define the prototype as this Bluetooth will work properly or not. So prototype is defined for that. Next is what economic feasibility. so everything developed within this group should be cheaper than other solution and allow for the high volume production okay so uh, economically bluetooth is cheaper okay so these are the five concept that must be followed when the bluetooth is invented and obviously bluetooth fulfills this all the criteria so the wireless personal area network group cooperated with the bluetooth consortium and they have developed this bluetooth standard okay so these are the reasons why bluetooth is invented now uh, many different user scenarios can be imagined for the uh, wireless piconets or wireless personal area network so which are uh, which are the scenarios first of all connections of peripheral devices okay now you know there are numbers of devices are available most devices are connected to the desktop computer via wires for example keyboard mouse joystick headset speakers etc so this type of connections have the several disadvantage which are each device has its own type of cable okay so you require such a uh, specific uh, slots particular slots for each and every devices okay for headphone you require the jack etc okay so different plugs are needed wire uh, wires block office space in the wireless in wireless network no wires are needed you just require the bluetooth chip in that particular device and you are able to communicate with the uh, device okay so in wireless uh, this is uh, this is uh, this disadvantage is overcome now uh, support for ad hoc networking so bluetooth device supports ad hoc networking that if any device doesn't have any bluetooth feature but if uh, any bluetooth chip is installed in that particular device 
then we are able to communicate with that uh, with that device using the bluetooth technology so we have the cheaper bluetooth chips so that is what it also supports for the ad hoc networking now next is what bridging of networks so bluetooth device bridge two different devices so mobile phones can act as a bridge okay for example using the wireless piconets a mobile phone can be connected to pd or laptop okay uh, in a simple way and the mobile phone can act as a bridge also to provide the communication so it provides the bridging of network also now uh, which are the advantages of the bluetooth okay so first advantage is what it creates the ad hoc connection as we have seen in the last slide it creates the ad hoc connection immediately without any wires we don't require any wires and connection establishment is a very easy you just have to configure the device and you are able to communicate with that particular device okay user only need to pair the bluetooth pair connection between two device you just have to pair device as you have used the bluetooth you are uh, very uh, familiar to the bluetooth technology now next is what it has the low power consumption okay when you are using the bluetooth it will not occupy your entire battery the next is what it can pass through walls also it can penetrate walls it has a range better than the infrared communication okay infrared waves cannot pass through walls okay if you will put your hand uh, in front of remote your, your channel will not be changed but in bluetooth in, in the terms of bluetooth technology it doesn't happen like this okay you can uh, change the data uh, you can uh, exchange the data if uh, that particular device is in another room also now next advantage is is easy to install we just have to define one bluetooth chip in your device and you are able to communicate with the bluetooth device next is what it makes the connecting to the different devices convenient okay you can make the connection to the different devices using the bluetooth technology on one main advantage it is a wireless technology you don't require any bulk of wires okay if you have a pc and if you have a wireless mouse wireless uh, keyboard then it will be very convenient for you then next is what it is free to use if the device is installed with it next it is used for the voice and data transfer we can use the voice and data uh, we can do the voice and data transfer using the bluetooth device next due to the availability of the bluetooth headphones calls can be taken on the phone even while driving okay even if you are driving uh, the two wheelers or you are driving the car you are able to access the phone you are able to receive the phone okay and doing some other activities simultaneously this hands free operations delivers the great strength okay it provides the hands free operation you just wear the headphone and you do your work and still you are able to hear the uh, still you are able to uh, receive the call so you are able to communicate with others okay now uh, we have seen the advantages now let's see the which are the disadvantages of the bluetooth okay so one of the big big disadvantage of the bluetooth is security so this is due to the fact that it operates on the radio frequency and hence can the penetrate through wall through walls so it is advisable not to use the critical business or personal data transfer using the bluetooth technology okay now next is what as home radio frequency technology this is again another wireless uh, wireless land standard so home radio frequency technology operates on the same standard on which bluetooth works on same frequency on which bluetooth works so it may be possible if the same technology we are using at the same place it may be it has the interference from it next uh, it has the bandwidth is a lower compared to the wifi ultimately uh, it, it in general it is that the bandwidth is low because wifi provides much more communication much more uh, communication to much more distance okay so these are the disadvantages of the bluetooth then next is what it only allows the short range communication okay then it can connect two device at once two same device at once okay you can communicate your phone device with another phone device but you cannot communicate more than one phones more than two phones at the same time so then that can it can only connect two device at the same time, time at this uh, at once next last disadvantage it can lose the connection in a certain conditions 
Okay, so these are the disadvantages of the Bluetooth device. So summary of this lecture, we have learned about the ISM band, that is industrial, scientific and medical band on which Bluetooth technology works. Then we have uh, the Bluetooth introductions, okay, uh, how Bluetooth invented uh, and how it works. Then next, advantages of Bluetooth and disadvantages of Bluetooth. Okay, so remaining interesting topic about the Bluetooth we will cover in the next lecture. Okay, so thank you for watching. We will meet in the next lecture with a new topic. Thank you.